people is that if you are going to be on LinkedIn, then you really need to have a good profile. If you do nothing else, just have a good profile on LinkedIn. So let's get started. Um, a little bit about me. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Judy Parsons. I'm an independent LinkedIn trainer and LinkedIn strategy coach. Uh, by being independent, what I mean is that I am not employed by LinkedIn. I'd be lovely if I was, but I'm not. Uh, so I work independently of them. And I've been working with business owners and sales teams for the last eight years on using LinkedIn as a lead generation tool. So they have a good presence on there and they can generate inbound inquiries. Prior to that, I was a marketing manager with an IT and telecoms companies where I was responsible for generating leads for the sales teams. Um, so for me, I'm a marketing person, but I'm a business development focused marketing person. So LinkedIn has just resonated with me completely and it's my favorite platform to use. So enough about me, let's crack on. So what we're going to cover today is what is LinkedIn? So I think that's important to sort of go back and reflect on what is LinkedIn, because I think once you understand what LinkedIn is, it will help you sort of identify how you're going to approach it. We're going to look at what's your why. Again, very important to know why you're using LinkedIn, because again, that will define how you approach it. And then you need to know who you're talking to. Now, if you've been watching any of the other webinars, you'll know this is, everybody else has been saying the same thing. Like um, Heather Robinson uh, on her webinar, uh, was it this week or last week, time flies so much, but she talked about personas and knowing who your audience is. So again, LinkedIn is no different. We need to know who it is we're talking to. And then we're going to look at creating a client focused LinkedIn profile. And I'll explain what that is as we go along. And also we're going to take, have a look at LinkedIn pages. So LinkedIn pages are basically um, company pages. LinkedIn has renamed them LinkedIn pages instead of LinkedIn company pages. Hey, yeah. But that's what they are. And one of the common questions I get asked from people is, should I have a LinkedIn page? So I think it's something that we should also address on here. However, the first thing I wanted to do is just understand where everybody currently is with regards to their LinkedIn profile. How would you rate it? So I've got a little poll here. So I'm just going to share this poll. And I'd really be great if you could go through and tell me, you know, are you currently happy with your profile? Or are you just looking to see if there's anything else you could do? Do you think there's room for improvement? Have you not touched your profile for ages? Or are you a fairly newbie and you're just looking to get an account set up and you have no idea where to start? It'd be fantastic to give me an idea of where everybody is today. That would be fantastic. So still a few more votes to come in, but it actually a lot of the lots so far looks like room for improvement is, uh, is, is kind of the biggest one. 43% are looking to uh, room for improvement. Oh, so Emily has raised her hand. Oh, you're, you're testing me there, Emily. Not quite sure. Let's have a look, look at the chat. How do we vote? Um, can you not see it, Emily, on your screen? That's a very good question. So, Sarah, you're a new, you'd like to set up a profile. Uh, so, Rory, I don't know if you could see if, if uh, people aren't able to see the poll. Oh, don't you? We'll love the wonders of technology. So, uh, need to, so thank you, Josh. I do put, I, uh, when we tested it, everybody, we could see the poll. So I'm not really sure why, if not everybody can see the poll. So I apologize for that. I had and, to, ex oh, thank, oh, sorry, yes. I'll just jump in. Um, yes, um, some of the attendees are using the web uh, browser to access this webinar. So that could be the case. Um, since we're using the app, uh, the kind of the poll pop popped out, but for the web version, it may not be the case. So that could be the case, really. All right. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, anyway, well, we've got a pretty good selection there. Uh, thank you very much for uh, getting back to me. Actually, now, I just would like to say as well, I did want to make this webinar as interactive as possible. 
Uh, so I really appreciate you putting your comments in the chat box. But also we're going to have a little exercise later on as well. So it's not going to be me talking all the time. Uh, most of the time, admittedly, but not all the time. So if you do have some a pen and paper handy, we're going to do a little exercise later on as well. Uh, fantastic. Anyway, I think that's great. So actually 40% think there's room for improvement. Um, 28 not touch profile for ages. 10% are new. That's fantastic. And 22 are happy just looking for tips and tricks. So it'd be really interesting. Um, I'm going to rerun this poll at the end of the training. I would be really interested to hear the 22% who are happy with their profile looking for tips and tricks. If after this session they think, oh, actually there are things that I could do and change. It'd be really interesting to hear that. So thank you very much for that. I'm going to end that polling. Fantastic. And okay, wonderful. Don't you just love this technology? Fantastic. Right. So we're going to start by say, asking the question, what is LinkedIn? Now, most of you are probably going to go, it's a social media platform, Judy. Of course it is. It's a lot along with the face, like, uh, the likes of Facebook and Twitter. <clears throat> but you know, for me, LinkedIn is so much more than just a social media platform. The reason being for that, because first and foremost, it's one big database, 28 million profiles on LinkedIn in the UK alone. It's a massive number of people on LinkedIn. And LinkedIn's really nice because it gives us the tools. Oh, I don't know why that's popped back up. Uh, it gives us the tools um, to actually drill down and find the people that we want to get in front of for free. So everything I'm talking about today on this webinar, you can do on the free version of LinkedIn. There's nothing that's just for premium members at all. It's all that you can do on the free version. Now, one of the things when I was a marketing manager working in a, an IT and telecoms company, one of the biggest spends that I had with my budget was buying in data. So I love the fact that with LinkedIn, you've got it there at your fingertips. It's incredible. And of course, because um, it's such, you know, it's where a lot of people are hanging out and because it is such a big, big database and because we do have those tools to drill down and find people, it actually makes LinkedIn the best place uh, for networking. It's the closest thing to face to face networking you can get online. And because we're talking about LinkedIn profiles here, if we just think about face to face networking and LinkedIn, obviously face to face networking is now online. Um, appreciate that. But if we think about sort of LinkedIn and networking, when you walk physically walk into a room or you're physically on a Zoom call for an online networking, you yourself is representing you. On LinkedIn, as of, of online networking, it's your profile that is representing you. It's your profile that is a physical you that goes into the room. It's your 60 seconds. So LinkedIn is a brilliant companion to use with networking, as you probably know, for those of you who already go networking. Um, you probably know that after the Zoom networking and online networking, everybody connects on LinkedIn. So it's a brilliant companion for networking. So you really want to have a good profile, even if you just go networking. And the final reason why I think LinkedIn is so much more than just a social media platform is because it's also a website. It's another website for you and your business. And let's just think about websites for a moment. I'm assuming that most people here will have a website. If you work for a company, your company will certainly have a website. And websites are obviously seen as a very, very important part of the marketing and lead generation mix for, for businesses. And we spend a lot of time, money and effort. We get the branding right. We get the messaging right. We have to get traffic to the website. So we think about SEO optimization, what keywords are going to be important. We write blogs to help drive traffic to the website. And when people come to our website, we want to make sure that they are engaged and they stay on our website. So they take some form of action. So whether they're going to sign up to your mailing list, whether they're going to email you, whether they're going to ring you. So we think of that as a website and then think of LinkedIn profile. It works in exactly the same way. So you've got to get found. Your profile has to get found. So it's got to have the right keywords in there. When somebody comes to your profile, it's got to engage them. So they stay on your profile and they take some form of action. Again, whether that's to connect with you, to sign up to your mailing list, to email you, whatever form of content, uh, contact you want them to do. 
And we have to remember Google loves LinkedIn. Uh, if you have got a LinkedIn profile, there's a really good chance that your profile is going to come up on the first page of the Google results alongside your website. So for example, if you search LinkedIn Training Wakefield, there's my company page on Google. LinkedIn Lady, there's my personal profile. So I don't know, is that, is that got anyone thinking about how they see LinkedIn? I've shared this with some people and they just had never really thought to think of LinkedIn as another website. Um, and so it really affected how they saw it. Does that, does that, um, does that resonate with anyone? Does that make them think how they will change their view of LinkedIn? Uh, oh, oh, one message. Thank you. Oh, yeah, hadn't. Yes, yeah, thank you, Tasman. Hadn't thought of it. So, um, yes, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Joy. Yes, it's powerful. That's why I haven't done so much with it. Uh, okay, you see it more as a company site than a personal site. Okay, interesting. So, um, right, yes, yeah, so a Google searching. Yes, thank you. So I, I probably appreciate people can't see this on the recording, can they? So what the messages are, but that's great. It's a good way of thinking about it, Carmel. Yeah, exactly. I think it's a good way of thinking about it. And then I think that's the thing. It is about you thinking about your LinkedIn profile. So that's fantastic. So Sarah, you've put, I think you can have two separate profiles. Um, are you talking about personal profiles there? Because in theory, yes, you can, because you can have different email addresses, but LinkedIn's terms and conditions says you can't. And um, personally, I think having two separate profiles is actually double the work. So um, that's just my point of view on that one. So we'll move on. So the thing you have to think about, because your LinkedIn profile can get found on Google, and it can potentially come up alongside your website. It means that anybody who's looking for you on Google has the potential to either go to your website or your LinkedIn profile. And in theory, what you want to do is make sure that whatever, wherever they decide to go, whether it's your website or your LinkedIn, it should be consistent. It should be congruent. It should not matter whether they go website or LinkedIn. So the other thing that we have to think about is that the way people buy um, has changed. We know as consumers that we don't actually, we do our own research, we'll ask people before we actually go and speak to a salesperson. And B2B buyers, business to business buyers are doing exactly the same thing. There was some research by salesforce.com that said that 92% of B2B buyers are starting their buying journey by going to Google and doing their research on there. So hence, website profile option could come up. There was some more research done by a company called IDC who said that actually 75% of B2B buyers are going directly to LinkedIn to research suppliers. So they're missing out the whole website Google stuff. They're going straight to your LinkedIn profile and they're looking for suppliers. So the question you have to ask yourself is if your potential prospect went to your LinkedIn profile instead of your website, what impression would it make? would you be confident that it makes the right impression? Are you confident your profile positions you as the expert? And does it help you build that know, like, and trust? So I really appreciate, so let's see, what do you think? Do, are you confident of your um, profile? Do you think it would make the right impression? So Mania, you've asked a different question. Do you hold any value to the LinkedIn social selling index? So that's the SSI score. It's a measure that LinkedIn gives. And some, you know, it's a benchmark and I think it's good, but I think that um, if you, you want to measure other KPIs, I always have a look at what it's doing, but I'm more interested in actually the amount of uh, people who are emailing me and messaging me. So everybody seems that they're quite happy with their profile. Okay. Lovely. Trying to get more recommend. Yeah, recommendations are good, Liz. Okay. 
So yeah, so you need to make sure that it makes a right impression. That's what we've got to do there. The other thing is you have to understand why you're on LinkedIn. What is it you want LinkedIn to do for you? I often hear people say, oh, so-and-so told me to, uh, that I need a LinkedIn account. So off they go, they create a LinkedIn account. They don't really know why they're creating it or what they're going to say on that profile. And the problem with LinkedIn, I believe, is that I don't think it's very user-friendly, it's not very intuitive, it kind of drives you down this CV route. And um, so people you know, tend to put every job they've had, every education that they've had, and um, because it's quite difficult and they don't really know what they're saying, they could get interrupted by the day job, you know, a phone call or an email, and then they forget they were doing their profile and it's left there hanging and not really doing anything for them. So it's really important to understand why you're using LinkedIn and what you want it to do for you. So if I had my LinkedIn magic wand, with me, what is it that you want LinkedIn to do? Are you looking to win new business? Is it all about building credibility, raising awareness, finding new employees? Or is it you just want to have a good profile? As I mentioned before, you may just you may want it so that when you connect with people following networking, it works well. So I'm going to go a little poll here and um, I'm going to see how this question two, launch polling. I'd be really interested to know what's your why if you've got one. Perhaps I should have put that as an option. Don't have one. <laughs> Win new business. Yeah. S support networking. Fantastic. Not many looking to find new employees. That's interesting. Okay. Oh, one person. Fantastic. Yeah, have a good profile to support network and other marketing activities as well, I guess. I think, you know, using LinkedIn to integrate with your marketing, it's not a standalone tool. LinkedIn is great to be using with other platforms as well, the marketing activity. Okay, that's really interesting, actually, because I thought when new business would be um, like, you know, the majority of people's uh, why, but actually it's about raising visibility and being awareness. And actually, the, the, the number one reason most of you are on LinkedIn is to have a good profile to support networking. Brilliant. Lovely. I think that's everybody voted there, or most people have voted. So thank you for that. That's great. Really interesting to, to know that. Let's just uh, oh, we'll move on. Oh, too far. Okay, so... What you tend to, what I tend to find is that the biggest mistake therefore people make is that they see LinkedIn as their online CV. And what you get when you receive CV style profiles is uh, these are very uh, boring kind of CV style statements like strong and experienced salesperson, proven track record, demonstrated history. I mean, even if people were looking for jobs, this is really kind of boring words to be using. You also get profiles that use the I word a lot. Like, you know, this one here is, is an incredible, always makes me laugh when I see this one. I am highly motivated and relish a challenge. I thrive working under pressure. I always work. I am, I have considerable. I am also, I am this, I am that. Nobody cares. The, we, you know, using the I word, it's all about you, which is very much the CV style kind of um, profile. Another thing that I see quite a bit is people using um, or talking about themselves in the third person. So, in, for example, Rob is an award-winning professional. Rob will help you see. And we don't want to use third party or third person wording in our profile because, again, if you go back to the analogy with face-to-face -face networking or online networking, we are using LinkedIn to help us build relationships. We're using it to have a conversation with people and you talking about ourselves in third person is putting a barrier there. I believe it puts a barrier there between having a conversation. It puts us back. It's stepping us away from building relationships with people. And I have never met anyone who would does a uh, go to a networking event and does their 60 seconds in third person. And one of my favorite mantras is if you wouldn't do it face to face, don't do it on LinkedIn. I noticed somebody just made a comment. Are you going to say, yes, they have? Anybody know? The Queen. <laughs> Thank you, Adam. Yes, I'm sure she does. Yes. <laughs> oh, dear me. Oh, brilliant. Excellent stuff. So thank you for that. 
So we've looked at what LinkedIn is in terms of it being a website and the closest thing to face-to-face -face networking. Um, we've looked at, and we understand why you want to use it. So using that, we're going to go and look at what you really should be saying on your LinkedIn profile. So the thing is, your LinkedIn profile is not about you. So yes, it's your LinkedIn profile, but it's not about you. It's about your ideal client and what's in it for them because generally people are not interested in you. They want to know what it is you can do for them. Now, I know that if we think about websites, that uh, there will be, well, let me just move on to this slide, sorry. So we need to focus on benefits. That's what we're doing. We're focusing on benefits on our LinkedIn profile. So this is very much like our websites, isn't it? Our websites, we don't go in and talk about ourselves. We don't have our CVs. I don't know anyone who's got a CV on, on their, their website unless they're, it's a job kind of website that they're doing. Yes, we've got an about page on our website, but it's not the home page. It's not the first thing that people are going to see is about us. It's about them. It's talking. So this won't be, this shouldn't be any great surprise to anyone to know that we're talking about our ideal clients as opposed to ourselves here. So we need to shift our language away from ourselves and onto the other person. And we need to use you. We want to try and have a conversation. So if you struggle with, have you ever, if your company, and we need to use you as opposed to I, I am, we are, we need to use you. Um, what we want to do is build empathy and rapport with our audience. We want people coming to our profiles and nodding their head going, yep, this person can help me. So it all comes down to who is it you're talking to? Who is your audience? And you need to know who they are. You know, who is it you help? What are their pains and challenges and what words, or what word keywords, key phrases would they use to find you? So we're gonna have a little exercise here. So um, I mentioned uh, earlier, I was gonna do a little exercise and I'd like you to really participate if you can here, because for me, I think it's quite important to understand who your audience is because it will help you write your LinkedIn profile. So what I'd like you to do is to think of your best ever client or group of clients. Who do you want more of? You know, you love them, they love you, they had a great result, they paid you well, you want more of these particular clients. And what I want you to do is put yourself in their shoes. Okay, what, when you were talking to them, when you were having those conversations, what were they saying to you? What was keeping them awake at night? You know, what were their challenges? What was the challenges that you were helping them solve? And then what words were they saying to you? And can you identify what the top three keywords that your group of clients would be using to find solutions to the problems you solve? Now, if you have already um, done a website exercise doing your keyword uh, analytics, you've got Google Analytics, for example, if you already know which keywords drive the most traffic to your LinkedIn profile, you want to use those on LinkedIn. So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes here, and I really appreciate if you could sort of get on board, but have a think about your ideal client in your head. Think of a, a person that you, you know, or a group of clients that you want more of. And then what was their number one challenge? What was a challenge that you, that you um, could solve for them? And what were those words? Can you think, if you can't think of three, just think of one keyword that they would use to help search for that challenge. And then I'm just going to give you a couple of minutes. It'd be fantastic if we could then, if somebody would be happy to share. Is that okay with everyone? So Minir has got teacher recruitment. Uh, so Charles has asked if I want to use LinkedIn as my glorified CV. I would never use, even if I was, so you're presumably job hunting, I wouldn't use LinkedIn as a CV. Um, I, you want to, it, it's a similar principles. You, you've got to understand um, what is it your potential employers are looking for? And you use that, you know, what's the situation, that, the, the, that star thing, the way it's timed, what the results of what you've done. They want to see what you've achieved. And it's not so much, you know, being I am driven is, doesn't really tell anybody anything. 
Uh, no, Liz, it doesn't really give. LinkedIn doesn't give stats about search terms um, per se. It will if you do search. Um, so you have to use external as like answer the public, uh, Google keyword analysis. Uh, but that's a great question, actually. And uh, I'm going to make a note of that. Thank you. Because I think that's uh, worth a, an extra um, little blog for me. Has anybody ever thought about this before, about who their audience is when it comes to LinkedIn? No, fantastic, not in any detail. I, I, do you know what I find is if you've already done quite a bit of work on your website doing the messaging, I'll often look at people's websites and I'll go, you can use that on LinkedIn, you can use that on LinkedIn. If you've already got this uh, um, sort of activity for your website, obviously LinkedIn isn't as big as your website, so you have to cut it down, but you can use that definitely on long LinkedIn. There's no reason why you can't. Uh, okay, Haley. so this is a job role. So I've just found completed an MBA with Todd put test scores for each module if I was jumping thing. What are your thoughts on this? My thoughts on that is coming back to what is it your um, employers want? Is that important for them? Because it's not about you, it's important for the employer. What do they need to know? That's what I would, uh, I would be looking at. If they need to know it, then put it on. If they don't, not relevant. It's more about... Um, what what it's transferable skills, I guess, um, and what you've actually done. Right, fantastic. Um, Haley, I actually did a presentation to Sheffield of University um, about how to position your LinkedIn profile. So maybe for you, get in touch with me afterwards. We can have a look at that. Oh, Sarah, this is great. How can I make sure I listen to tactics? Great. So fantastic. Lovely. Excellent. So I'll move on now. But what this information here, this know your audience, exit, I use this all the time when I'm writing my clients profiles. If you spend some time going through who your audience is, what their challenges are, and what those keywords would be, it will help you write your LinkedIn profile from the perspective of your client rather than yourself. So it's really, really um, um, important to focus on your ideal clients. So uh, this is quite a long question from, I'm on as myself to be myself. Yeah, this, you, you still have to be authentic, absolutely, Stacey. Whereby, whereby we have a company page. So it, it depends, it, so it comes back to your why, Stacey, that's really important to understand why. So in terms of your role, so if you work for a company and your position of sales or business development, you've got to be seen as the expert and talking to the, your potential clients. So it depends on why you're on LinkedIn and what you want it to do for you. So, as I said, so you, yeah, so you, it depends what your role is, Stacey, in the company. It really does. Uh, yes, you can put hashtags in your profile, Liz, but I wouldn't put that many in there. Um, right, okay, fantastic. Okay, so Stacey, as a marketing executive and you're helping to share, that's a slightly different role for what I'm looking at here. So you've got a double-edged kind of thing here because potentially you will want your profile to help attract careers going further down the line. But um, as a marketing exec, if you, you're helping, you are a brand ambassador, as you said, so you could, your company would um, have some standard messaging that they would give to their employees this is what I recommend employees do, employers do, sorry, is have some standard text that they can give to employees to use on their profiles, especially 
when they're sharing content. So this for me, when I'm talking about LinkedIn, this is very much from a business development perspective. It's about people who are going out and have to go and sell either as a business owner or as a company, but they're in a kind of sales business or business development role. So very important to spend some time on that activity because it will give you all the information you need to create this client focused profile because you're thinking about your clients and not about you. So when somebody comes to your LinkedIn profile, the first thing they're going to see is this header section here. And what we've got, so this is like above the fold, this is what people see first, and this has got to grab attention, because if it doesn't, people are gone. You've literally got seconds to grab people's attention. So you've got at the top your header banner and your photo, you've got your headline underneath your name, you've got, this is a new feature, I'm not sure if everybody's got this yet, but this is called Open for Business. We're gonna go on to LinkedIn a little bit and I'll show you that in a bit more detail. And then we've got the about section. So this is what people are going to see first when they land on your LinkedIn profile. So we're going to talk mainly about this today and we're going to have a look first at branding your profile. So obviously you've got a profile photo and you've got your header banner and the header banner is 1584 by 396 pixels. And um, by default is this rather boring blue background. Let's have a look at your photo first. So, I said before that LinkedIn needs to build that know, like, and trust. And your photo is one of the main ways of building know, like, and trust on LinkedIn. So it is very, very important to have a photo. But equally important is to have a photo of you. And don't be hiding behind uh, your logo. And it needs to be just you. So no pets, no partners, no nights out. It's got to be just you. And it's got to be positioning you in the right way. You know, it's your professional brand on here. So for, Mark, uh, for Stacey, who's a marketing executive, you need to have a photo that looks professional uh, because you, the impression, you have to think about that impression that you're making. So, you, you know, you don't want any dodgy kind of photos where you're just pulling like, I don't know, weird gloves on and stuff. No selfies, no hiding behind cups and, and stuff like that. These are all active images. These are images that I've taken recently off LinkedIn in the last month or so so although it's getting better unfortunately there's still a lot of dodgy photos out there and importantly again if we think about linkedin and networking look approachable look like somebody who would be very happy to come up and talk to you um, very very important again if we think about networking if you go to a networking event and you're new to that event you're going to talk to the people who look approachable who are smiling friendly looking like the type of people that you would want to do business with so for me, I don't know if there is any uh, photographers on the call today, but uh, if you are, I think uh, pop your name and details in the chat box, because for me, your best marketing spend is getting a good photo. I use my photo, on, not just on LinkedIn, but all over my website and Twitter and also on my business cards. But I appreciate if you, uh, with the situation we're in at the moment and you feel that you could improve your photo, um, you may, obviously, the smartphones are brilliant. You can get a really good photo if you feel that uh, you need to improve your photo. Does anybody have any thoughts on their profiles, Do you, um, on their pictures? Do you need a new picture or not? <laughs> uh, I'll come back to that, Rizman, if you don't see the services thing. Yes, you can change the background. We're going to come on to that in a minute. Uh, so everybody, everybody happy? I need a new picture. Uh, so Olivia is a photographer. Put your details in, Olivia, because I recommend everybody. And Katie. Can you have sunglasses on? No. Sunglasses, as in sunglasses, if you wear glasses. So yeah, I wouldn't say you can. I would say no. <laughs> um, yes. So, you know, so Kat, Karen, you say you've got your crossing arms, but think, okay. Uh, I need to look at it, but remember that anything that could put a barrier up, you want to be open. I mean, Andy, you can see his, on this photo here, he's got his arms crossed, but you don't. On LinkedIn, you're going to get kind of a headshot, so you don't really see that bit. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it might not, but I could smile more. It's so important to smile. I sometimes see people just look grumpy, and I'm going like, no, smile. So, um, yeah. 
I, I think Carl asked the question, black and white versus color. Um, I think it depends on the quality of the photo, personally, uh, and what your preference is. I think there's some very nice black and white photos. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear, Charlotte, multiple, I dislike them all. Oh dear. I know it's really hard. I appreciate that it's really hard. Um, sometimes people just don't like their photos, but honestly, get a good photo, a good pho professional photographer will, and it doesn't cost the earth, it really doesn't. Um, but a good pho photographer will get you in a, will relax you and get you in the right light. So I highly recommend anyway, a good photo photographer. So um, the next bit is our header banner. As I said, we've got this boring blue uh, header banner here and we don't want that, we want to brand it. We want to either, you've already got a website uh, banner that you can bring over onto LinkedIn and use the same imagery. Ideally, that's what you want. You want it to be consistent with your website. Or if you don't have a website at the moment or you don't have any images, you can use something like this where it's just your brand color with some text on it. Or failing that, you can use a generic image like Rob's got down here. Rob's an energy consultant. So we've just got a generic image of some electricity pylons. So if you're going to go for a generic image, you can use sites like Pixabay or Unsplash and uh, just choose an image that kind of is relatable to what you do. But make sure it's a rectangular image because um, LinkedIn, obviously the header banner is long and narrow. So square images don't work very well. So make sure you choose a rectangular one. Um, if you need to make your own um, header banner, you can use canva.com. Um, again, either just choosing your color, background color and put some text on or put in some sort of the images that you've got. And uh, on Canva, you need to use custom dimensions. I don't know if anybody's familiar with Canva or not, but you need to use custom dimensions. So when you go in and create new image or whatever, select custom dimensions and you need one, five, eight, four by three, nine, six pixels for your personal profile. And then for the company page, you need 1128 by nine, what, nine, 191 pixels. Ugh, put my teeth back in. So we have looked at our profile photo, we've changed our header banner, we've done some nice bit of branding there on our profile. There isn't a lot of places where you can put visual stuff on LinkedIn. So it's really important to use the spaces where we have got that opportunity to put some visuals on there. Your next uh, part of your header section is going to be your headline. Now your headline is really important. Um, it has two jobs to do. Most people just use it as their uh, job title and company name. But your headline has got to get you found on LinkedIn. And then once you've been found, it's got to encourage people to click through to your profile over and above anybody else's. So having your job title and company name on LinkedIn is a waste of space. And that is all about you as a CV style profile, not a client focused profile. What you want with LinkedIn is an attention grabbing headline. You want people to click through to your profiles. And importantly, you want the right people clicking through to your profiles because if they are not coming to your profile, you are not gonna generate any leads on LinkedIn. So you need to tell people what it is you do, how you help, so focus on the benefits. You need to put keywords in there. So look at those three top three keywords as I mentioned and put as many as those that you can in your headline. But you've only got 120 characters that includes spaces. So you don't, it's probably the hardest part of your LinkedIn profile to do, to get right. However, you can change LinkedIn in an instant. And that's the beauty about LinkedIn. You can test, try it, see what it's like. So you can go in and try anything other than just your job title and company name is gonna be so much better. Unless you're an accountant, you probably do need to have an accountant in your job title, uh, sorry, in your company, uh, in your headline. So here's an example. So here we've got Simon, really poor photo. He's on holiday with the kids uh, and he's a managing director at Virgo. Tells us nothing about what he does, how he helps, builds no like and trust, nothing there. So we've now got a really good photo of Simon so we can see what he looks like and we can help associate with him. But now he's not an MD anymore. He's an ergonomic seating specialist because ergonomic seating is the keywords that his audience are looking for. They want somebody to help them with ergonomic seating. They want DSC workplace assessments. That's what they're looking for. So that's the difference between having managing director and having a more client focused headline. 
And the other thing about your headline is that it follows you around LinkedIn. So if you're going to be active on LinkedIn, it's going to follow you around. So here's Rob, and this is his uh, headline. And he's helping business owners and workforce implement modern marketing through workshops, da, 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 da. Okay. So when he engages on LinkedIn, on the desktop version, you can see that that headline truncates. So you only see about the first 84, 83 characters before it truncates. So now you can see that he's helping business owners and workforce implement modern marketing through, and then it stops. On the mobile, it's even less. So if somebody, if you comment on something on the mobile, what people see is just like the first 30 odd characters helping business owners and work. And it's not really telling anybody anything. And if you're going to be active on LinkedIn, it'd be really good to have your most important information at the front so that people will actually see what it is you do and go, oh, let's have a look at that. Oh, let's have a look at that. Because we, being active is a great way to drive traffic to your profile. So uh, you want to kind of encourage people to go, oh, actually, I do need that. Actually, that's quite interesting. Oh, do you know what I mean? We need to get that sort of, oh, I haven't thought about that kind of trigger going on so they come to your profile. I hope that makes sense to everybody. So CV style versus client focus. So as I say, job title and company, that is a CV style, doesn't tell us anything, versus a client focus profile. So cybersecurity, keyword, IT support, keyword, benefit led statement. And I like, you know, this one's got helping or keeping South Yorkshire businesses working and safe. So it's an audience there that they're talking to as well your IT in safe hands. So we've got three keywords in there, cybersecurity, IT support, and IT, and a benefit-led statement. So hopefully you can see the difference there. Is that giving anybody, anyone food for thought on how, uh, yes, David, the Campton should sell benefits as well. Totally agree. Um, yeah, love Canva, brilliant. Um, yes? We've got a question from the Q&A box, um, and it says, should LinkedIn profiles be limited to facts or is there space for creativity and expression? So I think one thing to remember with LinkedIn is that it's a person to person platform. I think um, you want some personality in there to be authentic. It's not, you don't want to be overly corporate. You want your personality to shine through. So it's, if they are relevant, um, questions uh, sorry if they're limited yeah sorry if they're important facts um then they should be in there but it's again it's about your ideal audience and who you're talking to if, if you're talking to accountants they probably would react differently to people who are creatives not to put anybody in boxes but you know you need to think about the kind of words and the way that your audience talks and and kind of mirror that and include your personality in there. I hope that answers that question. I hope so. <laughs> <Thank> you, <Pat. laughs> yeah. I know you don't know the answer to that, do you? But anyway, pop it in the chat box if that helps or not. You know, the person who asked this question, he knows who, who, who he is. And if it doesn't, you know, if you want to specify a question in more detail, please feel free to do so. And uh, I'll pass it on to Judy as well. And uh, I've got more questions if you don't mind. Judy. Oh, yes, yeah. Um, should we use bullet points in the headline? Um, so yes, you can use bullets, uh, points in the headline. Um, so I, I like, I, we're going to go on to my LinkedIn uh, in a minute and you'll see that I've got some bullets. So you can either have one long sentence, like, or you can break up the headline because as I say, 120 characters is, is not a lot of space. So bullets work quite well to break up the text. Uh, but don't, from my point of view, I don't believe you should overuse them. Um, less is more, if you like. For some people, you see a lot of um, sort of bullets and emojis. I'm not so keen on them, but again, it depends on your audience, I think. Right, okay. Um, uh, one more question. Um, any advice for creating a headline, <clears throat> excuse me, for those who work in the charity sector, uh, whose profile is less business focused, but may use their profile to recruit volunteers or network? It, it comes down to um, it, it comes down to your audience. So, what would you know? What's going to inspire a volunteer to come and work with a charity? So, there you need to. And, and charities are very good at working on the emotive. When you look at adverts for charities, they're working on the emotional side of things. So, it's about using uh, as a volunteer, you will be helping. You know, 
um, whatever it is your charity does. It's about focusing what your charity does and resonating with those people who feel have got an affinity with that charity. So it, uh, to me, it's about, it's still about creating a headline focused on your ideal client, whether that's a business focus or a charity focus or an employee focus. You want to focus on the benefits of why that person should volunteer for your organization. All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, that's it for me at the moment, but I'll be sure to pop in back with uh, more questions if I do have any more. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, Charlotte's asked a question about working full-time and freelance. Um, again, I... Um, digital marketing and I, and I. I I would go with what is is you why you're here <laughs> what's your why and what you want LinkedIn to do for you um you you could still have both job roles on there but if you want LinkedIn to help you generate more business for your freelance stuff then I would focus on the freelance so uh if you're a solicitor yes definitely a legal advisor and solicitor uh okay oh yep yeah. change banner too lovely i love how people are taking action already fantastic so are you saying that even if linkedin is your only career purpose a cv linkedin that's right i am yes you see it's about um i was gonna say it's about you but i'll keep telling you it's not about you it's about the types of jobs that you want to go for jade and uh, what are they looking for and if you go so you want to be a marketing person and you've gone to you want to work you've got these companies that you want to work for if you look at their job ads what are they looking for in those job ads and your profile has to answer those requirements that i would be positioning my profile to demonstrate i've got the skills and expertise that employers are looking for um right that's an interesting one uh, so <laughs> Sorry, Lisa said, "Is uh, CVs out? Uh, are CVs dated?" I'm not a, um, I'm not a career person. And I remember when I went to University of Sheffield, I was going, "Well, yes, use LinkedIn," but obviously the C, their career person was going, "Oh no, 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 no." <laughs> so uh, I think there's a place for both because when you apply for jobs, you've got to have your CV. But your employer, potential employers, are going to look at LinkedIn. They certainly are. So um, you you need to be aware of that. Uh, right. Okay. So if there are people who are like students and job hunting, there's a slightly different uh, presentation that I can talk about for that. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll record it and send it at some point if you uh, get in touch with me. So we have done our header banner, we've done our photo, we've done our headline. We're now going to come on to the about section, um, which is the next kind of, this is the biggest section I guess you're going to come to. And you've got about 2000 characters, a bit more now because they've changed, slightly changed LinkedIn, um, to talk about you and why you and build your credibility and position your expertise. But you only get to see the first three lines or so, 250 characters before somebody has to click on see more. Now this is on the desktop, on the mobile, it's only about hundred characters. So this part of the about section, I call the intro paragraph. It's nothing to do with LinkedIn. It's just what I call it because I like to use it as a standalone paragraph within the about section to augment the headline. So you've got your 120 characters. Or I should say, actually, by the way, if you've got an iPhone, uh, you actually can have 200 characters for your headline on the iPhone, just the iPhone. Unfortunately, it doesn't work on Android. It's just a loophole for iPhone. But uh, if you want to, uh, if you've got an iPhone or access to an iPhone, you can have 200 characters for your headline. But so I use the intro paragraph as a standalone paragraph to augment the headline and to create curiosity. Because remember, we want people to stay. We want people to go, oh, let's read a bit more. Let's see what she's got to say or he say, you know. Um, and we also want to include a call to action. So again, if we go back to the website analogy, on your website, you have call to actions, you'll go, you'll have your telephone number, your email, you may have a sign up for your mailing list. We need to do the same on LinkedIn. We need to make it easy for people to take the next step with us. So here's an example of an intro paragraph. And this, if we go back to that know your audience exercise, and I asked you, what's your number one challenge for your ideal clients? This is where you want to use it. So what's in that, so the, and I like questions, you don't have to use questions, but I quite like a yes, no question. So everyday business costs spiraling out of control. For this person, their audience's biggest challenge is business costs spiraling out of control. 
So they just simply put it as a question. And if they are not an ideal client, they'll go no. And if they are, they'll go yes. And then we go on to say how they help. So this company helps busy directors and managers save time and money on their business costs. So that's the benefit. The call to action, book a business cost review to see how much you could save and the contact details. Now, if you don't actually have a call to action as book a business cost or book a book a one-to-one, -one. some people use Calendly to go, let's have a chat, book a, meet, you know, book a call. Just go for no obligation chat or you know, get in touch. We just want to tell people, give them permission who do we want getting in touch with us and how can they get in touch with us? It's really important. So CV style versus client focus. So again, CV style is just using the sort of CV style statements, adaptable, highly motivated, strong background in marketing. Okay. Whatever you think of that versus challenge nothing impacts your physical mental and emotional more than your daily house lifestyles if you're not as healthy as like to be and like help and support or making the right choices then please connect or email so can you we kind of it's more of a story i think we're trying to sort of position it and and it's focused on them so if you notice it's you can you see here your your you there's no i am a expert in health i have been working do you see the, the kind of difference that we've got there hopefully you do fingers crossed featured i love featured um so featured is a new feature on linkedin if you haven't got this yet you will be getting it very soon so uh previously what you had is you had your about section and underneath your about section you could add media to your profile so you could add presentations and web links to websites and things like that but they were very small and you couldn't really see what they were so they've introduced this featured feature and for me this is great because it's much more flexible and it's much more visible so you want to have your most important if you've got a mailing list or some call to action it's got to be here this is where it's got to be and what's lovely about this is that you can add and you can edit what goes on this featured section. So this is totally new. So in terms, if you click on the plus button, you can see that you can add posts, you can add articles. So the one thing that has happened is articles. So articles are like blogs. You can put an article on, on LinkedIn. Uh, that's become a little bit more invisible. So if you've just written an article, you've got to add it to the featured section now. Uh, links to your website and you've also got to have media so any documents photos presentations that kind of thing needs to go there and what's really nice about it is that you can reorder it so you can choose the order in which these things go and also when you're finished or you've got a new one so you've written one article got a new article coming out you can remove the old one and add this one for example i'm going to demo this a little bit more when i get onto linkedin but it's a great i love featured so that actually is the whole header section there. We've looked at your header banner, your photo, we've looked at your headline, we've looked at the about section and we've looked at the featured section. What will happen now is that if somebody is still on your profile, they're either going to have a look at your current role or they'll look at the rest of the about section or hopefully if you're not connected, go and connect with you. So, or whatever it is that you want them to do. But I just wanted to mention about the experience section a little bit. I wasn't going to go too much depth into this, but on the experience section, we've got this job, uh, title section here and this is a hundred characters now that's important because if you think about your headline which is 120 characters you've got an awful lot of space here for your job title so instead of just saying accountant solicitor MD you can put more information in there keywords very important because we need to get our keywords throughout LinkedIn so putting them in your job title is another great place to put them so you can see this is an example of commercial photographer they, and the type of photography they do. So it's a really good opportunity to say a little bit more. Uh, and often I will mirror the job title with the headline. So they'll mirror. They won't be exactly the same because you've only got 100 characters as opposed to 120. And it's in the current role where you've got the 2000 characters where you want to start uh, drilling down on what those pains are that, or challenges that your audience have. This is where you want to try and build that rapport and empathy to demonstrate, actually, I know you've got this problem and I can help. <clears throat> and likewise, under the experience section, we can also add this media. So this is what it used to look like under the about section. 
before the featured section turned up. But it's still good to add a couple of um, sort of media under your job title if you can, uh, sorry, under your job role. So in terms of content, remember to always write in first person because we don't want to put that barrier up. The other thing you have to remember is you've got to make your profile easy to read. So you want lots of white space, break it up with short paragraphs and bullets. And the other thing you have to remember as well is that 60% of traffic to LinkedIn is from the mobile. So if you've got a profile with big blocks of paragraph text, it's too hard to read. Nobody's going to read it. You've got to make your profile easy to read. So break up, you know, really short paragraphs, two to three lines maximum, really short, succinct paragraphs. And remember to include your keywords throughout your profile. So not just your headline, your job title, throughout your about session, throughout your experience session, skills and endorsements. So scatter them throughout, it's really important. So I think somebody asked a question here about bullets and things like that. So it, they are good to help make your profile stand out. So I quite like using these symbols on this link here. Uh, these sorts of things like little ticks and stars and things like that, they're quite good. Uh, and you can also use emojis if you want to as well. Um, I quite like, not the kind of facey ones, but um, unless they work for your audience. But you know, you've got like these little pins and flags, they work quite well as well if you need to bullet something out. So bullets are really good if you've got questions. So, you know, do you feel like you're drowning under a sea of paperwork? Question mark, you know, that kind of thing. You can have a nice little bullet before that question. So what I wanted to understand now is we know where you rated your profile before. Now we've looked at their training and we've talked about what else you can be saying on LinkedIn. I'd be really interested to know whether that's changed how you how you approach LinkedIn and what you think to your LinkedIn profile. So um, I'm just going to go to question three. So I would really appreciate what do you think to your profile now? Could you, is there anything that you would change? Lovely. Actually, 60% are saying they can still see changes they want to make. 35% are going to revamp. Somebody's still happy with it. Oh, interesting. I haven't managed to change anybody's mind. Or maybe it was a brilliant one already. I don't know. So, <laughs> it's the person who found was still happy with their profile has found something of interest. Okay, so 60% uh, are saying that they definitely would make changes to their profile. I think that is, uh, any more votes for any more votes? And some of 35% are going to completely revamp it. Brilliant. Well, I hope that was useful for, for everybody in that bit. So I'm just going to end that. And so what I thought we'd do now is actually jump onto LinkedIn because you're probably bored of all the... Um, slides so i am going to go here so hopefully everybody can see my uh my linkedin profile uh, 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 right so we're going to come on to a few other things there so hopefully everybody yep can see it thanks very much excellent so i'm going on the basis that everybody can see my linkedin profile at the moment so good, good, good. Right, so header banner, photo, headline, everything. So what, I just kind of wanted to go through this a little bit because I thought it was easier uh, rather than just doing it on slides all the time. So um, obviously you've got all these little uh, pencil icons which is where you can edit your LinkedIn profile. So we can go in and we can um, add profiles to a section. So generally when you start a, a LinkedIn profile, you'll have your uh, header section here, you have the about, this is the featured. And then you've got your experience and you've got education and things like that. If you've done any voluntary work, you can, or any sort of, if you've got any publications, any organizations, you can go and add all these things to your LinkedIn profile. So any voluntary work is under background, skills, uh, there's the skills and endorsements you can add up to 50. I usually just had about 25 or so. But if you've got any publications, courses, all these things can go on if you want to add them to your LinkedIn profile, if, if it's relevant, of course. Um, now, 
this here is what I call open for business. This has been incredibly slow to roll out. Has everybody got this? Is there anybody not got this option here at the moment? Let's just have a look. Anybody not got this providing services? Uh, Claire doesn't have it. Right. Okay. I don't know why they're being so slow with rolling this out. Um, I really don't. Um, I think they LinkedIn are looking to see whether you're an individual uh, business or not. So let me just tell you a little bit about this. So if I just go back to this ad profile section here, for those of you who are job hunting, if I just click on intro, can you see looking for job opportunities? So you could add that to your LinkedIn profile and say what job opportunities you are, and you can choose to hide that have them public or not public. Uh, so, you know, if you're job hunting and don't want an employer to know, then you would not make it public. I'm obviously not looking for a job, so I don't have that on mine, but I am uh, fairly interested in being open for business. So I'm not 100% sure this new feature, how useful it is, but I go on the basis of it's there. It shows you what I do, might as well have it as not. But it also, the thing about it, it does allow people to email you on LinkedIn or message you on LinkedIn without being connected to you. So potentially you could get people who are looking for your services contacting you through this. So what I'm gonna do, if I just click on that pencil icon here, they've actually improved this quite a lot. So you can select the services that you offer and you can choose your work location, you can choose whether you're available to work remotely, and this bit here, allow LinkedIn members you're not connected with to message you for free. So you can choose whether you want that on or off, and then you can choose whether you want it public or not. Um, so I've got an NA public profile, so it's on by default anyway. So where it says add service, if I click on add service, so you've got all these headings, so you've got accounting, You've got consulting, coaching, design, events, etc. So you go and have a look at this. So there's a photo for all the photographers, there is a photography section. So you can go and say what kind of photography you do. Uh, if you're in estate agents, you can go and talk about estate agents, software development, writing for all the uh, copywriters out there. Um, accounting is really so it's is good. There's some real ones that you can choose what services do you offer as an accountant. Some people, it's not as clear cut, unfortunately. You can't add them, you have to select them from here. And basically what you do, can you see I've got this ticked? If I untick it, it takes it off. If I tick it, it adds it on. So I can go in and go, right, what do I do? Do I do, uh, do, I do resume writing? I can just tick it, you know, anything like that, you can just tick. And then once you're happy with it, we'll have a look at consulting, see if there's anything in there, PR, whatever it is you do, click on apply, click on save and it adds them here. So you can see I've got uh, public relations resume writing on here, which I actually don't do. So I'm gonna take those off. Um, so to take them off, can you see here? Just, just click on them, takes them off. Just click on it and it removes it and clicks on save. So you can only choose what's within LinkedIn, but it is quite, uh, it is quite useful to have and it's better. You'll see, you'll see it quite a lot probably as you're going around LinkedIn. Let's just see if there's been any questions. Uh, what do you do, David? He said, service, they are limited. I can't add what we actually do yet. No, so you, admittedly, it is quite difficult and um, you have to go with what the best option. Uh, no, Hayley, it doesn't, any, everything we're looking at is, every, is for the uh, free. You don't have to be a paid. LED lighting, all oh, right, okay, yeah, right. it's challenging. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, so Rizman, I can see that, but not job hunting. So you need to go to the prof add profile section and look for intro and go look for job opportunities. So if I click on look for job opportunities, that adds that to my profile. So you can add a uh, location, job title. I haven't tried this to be honest. See so supervisor software. So you can go in and, and choose what you're kind of looking for full time kind of roles and things like that. I hope that answers that question. Um, oh well, yes well Stephen you won't be able to change your Twitter name in contact you've got to go to settings to do that and um, privacy and settings to change your Twitter name so I'm just going to discard that because I don't want it uh, right okay so um, that's the open for business your contact details here again I see a lot of people who will have a 
Gmail account or Yahoo or something, you can have more than one email on your LinkedIn profile and I recommend you have more than one. So you'll have your personal Yahoo or Gmail or whatever, but also have your work one and make your work email primary. Um, so make sure that you've got your primary uh, email address on there. And uh, you want to, uh, you can add up your uh, websites as well, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, and this here is your LinkedIn profile URL. If you can, you want to customize this. So what we're going to do, can you see the pencil? I'm going to click on the pencil icon. All being well, that's going to open up a new box. And here, uh, can you see where it says add website? So I can click on website, uh, type in my URL, where it says personal, you want to say other, and then you want to say uh, accounting or accounting services or something. You know, you've only got 30 characters, but you want to put something in there other than just company page. A lot of people will just have company, but you can actually personalize that. So I'm going to move that at the moment. Um, you can't change your, as uh, Stephen was saying, you can't change your Twitter here. That's blanked out. You have to go to settings and privacy. If you want to change your public profile URL, can you see this like little square with an arrow coming out of it? We're going to click on that. And this is going to take you to your public profile URL. So this is quite important because what this means, it's what people can see if they are not logged into LinkedIn. So if somebody goes to your profile from Google search and they're not logged into LinkedIn, you can specify what they can see. And this is it here. So I've got most of my visibility on so people can see me. There's a couple of things I've turned off, but most of the things is you can see. Uh, if you don't want to be visible at all, you can just turn that off. But most people probably do want to be visible. And this is your edit your custom URL. This is your LinkedIn profile URL. And you, if you can, you want to edit this because it's really good to use on your email signatures. It's good to use on your, uh, I use it on my business card as well. And what you'll do if you've never edited this, it'll be your first name dash surname dash some numbers and letters. So you can just click on this box and go in and change what, it, what you want it to be. The problem is there's so many people on LinkedIn, you may not get your name. So you may need to do surname, first name, you may have to do surname dash, sorry, first name dash surname. So you might have to play with it uh, and, and stuff like that to get it. Some people are lucky and they get it straight away. Let's just see what the chat box. Uh... Hi Judy, um, oh, can I? Yeah, so he made me jump then, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Um, so one one question is how do you get your email address visible on the profile uh, right okay that's so let me just show you that so if we just come back to can you see email address here again we've got this little box here that little arrow so we click on that that's going to come to your settings and privacy here so you here is where you can add email addresses so you can add an email address so you can see I've got two million I've got my work email and I've got my uh, personal email here as well. It's good to, if you are employed, you definitely need to have two email addresses. There's so many people that I speak to that don't remember their LinkedIn login and their email addresses to their old work address so they can't even reset the password and stuff. So make sure you have your personal email on there as well. And um, you, so you can go in and add your email. LinkedIn will ask you to verify that email. Once it's verified, you can then make it primary. I hope that answers that question. Uh, uh, can you make LinkedIn for freelance and employee friendly? Not quite sure what that means. Make LinkedIn for freelance and employee friendly. Um, how long should the about section be? Um, so for me, less is more. It should be, uh, you don't need to fill the whole section unless you've got a lot to say. Um, but to me, it should be quite succinct. So you could, you've got with the featured section, they've slightly increased the length of the about section. It used to be 2000 characters. I think it's about two, three now, but you don't have to use all of that space. If you can say what you need to say in a shorter amount of space, use that. Uh, uh, so my services section is showing what job opportunities I'm open to instead of services. Do I change this to not open? Uh, you can delete it, just delete it off your profile. Just. Uh, let me just show you. Let me just get rid of that. Discard. Don't want to save it. So if you add, uh, if you've got, uh, if you do add this to your profile, for example, uh, let me just put something on there. 
add to profile and you don't want it on there you see I've got both on there now I don't want it so you can just go in and take it off and delete it I am no longer open delete and it should go so uh, was there any more questions that to look at there uh, well, I think that was it hopefully that answers those questions let's look at chat box um, the open for business if you haven't got it yet check that it's not under intro on the uh, add profile section if you haven't got it yet you're still waiting for it I don't know why it's taking so long um, so Liz well done you got your full name and no numbers brilliant where is the edit contact box I can't find it uh, so basically the uh, contact so you go to contact info and then click on the pencil and that allows you to con edit contact info. Uh, so, it, so in terms of Twitter, you've got to go to your settings and privacy. So the other thing I actually quite mentioned while we're here with, uh, with this is um, your uh, 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 account. Let's go there. So I'm going to the, you see these tabs here. So we've got privacy and account. So your email addresses is there and uh, where is twitter gone to hang on right there's your twitter settings i think it's stephen if you want to remove it add it add a twitter that's where you've got to do it it, it doesn't you can't do it from the contact details uh, 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 uh. ah right olivia struggling to get my email address to show on my header is that because i've got that here is that what you're saying I think it might be uh, is here so this email address isn't a clickable link basically what I've done here so um, is because like I say I want to use this as a website I want to make it as easy as possible for people to see my email address and stuff you could have your telephone number there if you wanted to but um, the way I've done that is by adding it as an education so if I just click on plus here it allows me to add an education and um, this is a free text box and you can put whatever you like in here. Click on save. So I've just put some gobbledygook in there. Click on save. And then what will happen is it moves it to the bottom here. So if, if I just, can you see if you, these like horizontal lines here, if I click and hold down my left mouse button, I can drag this to the top. It's a bit clunky as you can see. So I can drag that to the top. And once it's at the top, you can see that's how I got my email address there. So if you want to put your email address there, you can do, you don't have to. It depends again on your audience and who you're talking to. What's more important? Some people, it's more important to have their, uh, their, um, their current, you know, their current, their education, their most important education. For people who don't have any education that's worth putting on there. I mean, don't bother with schools and stuff like that, uh, A-levels or O-levels, whatever it is that you did forget those just have your most highest and most important qualifications on linkedin and if it's not relevant just put your email address or something in there and you still linkedin will still see that you've got uh, an email address an email address there and um, just want to quickly mention as well about um, experience you can have more than one current role uh, so this obviously is my main role but then i'm also an associate for some other companies but you can move current roles around and position them so again can you see these four lines here you can just click and drag and move them around okay um, when you create a new role if you click on the plus sign you can put your job title and stuff in here you can say you're currently working I like to make sure that share with network is turned off because if I put a new job role in here every, everybody will get notified I've got a new job and I'll get everybody going congratulations on your new job and I don't really want to do that but it may work in your favor potentially if you do want to highlight something you may want to do that but generally I don't <coughs> but what's really important is that uh, you can say this is a current role by remember but can you see here for some bizarre reason can you see that update my headline is ticked very important this so this is my headline at the moment if I put my job title in here let me say sales manager for example if I leave that as sales manager forget to untick that it's going to change my headline can you see to sales manager don't want that that 
um, tricks. So it, I don't really know why that LinkedIn does that. It's really annoying. Um, well, I guess I can because they're seeing people moving from job to job, but you have to be aware to turn that off. So um, just let's just discard that because I don't want it. Uh, just features I need to talk about as well. So can you, somebody asked about using bullets. So you can see that I've used these little diamond bullets in my uh, headline just to break it up a little bit. So you can see that's my full headline there. If you come down to my job title, you can see I've used slightly different bullets here, but you see that I've got 100 characters, so I can put more of the, the keywords in there. And somebody said about vertical bars. So that's actually just, a, there's a pipe symbol. There's a pipe on your keyboard. That's all you need to do to get those in there. Um, so should you also put your phone number above education so it appears with, only if you want people to call you on your mobile. How, mo how visible your mobile is, is how, it depends, how you want people to contact you is what should be visible. So uh, that's why I do that. So I just wanted to mention featured as well while we're here. My favorite favorite. So if I click on the plus sign, you can see posts. If I click on plus, it's going to come up with all the posts that I've done recently, she says. Come on, there we go. It's a bit slow. So, um, oh, gone too far. Let's go back. Let's close the windows down. Don't you just love LinkedIn? Right, there we go. So um, can you see where it says featured? So I can go in and decide which of these. So I'm going to, I'm loving the new LinkedIn feature. So I'm going to feature that. So you can see it's now featured. So you can go through and select whichever posts that you want. Click on done. Come back down here and you can see that's where that new post is. If I go back to the plus sign, any articles you've written, any links to website, I highly recommend you link to your website. And of course, you've got your photos and stuff there. What I want to do, though, is change the order of this. So if I click on the pencil icon, again, we've got these four lines. So I can go and scroll and move these up to where I want them to be so that they're positioned. Um, and if any are an older out date or you want there's some newer things, you can remove from features. So it's much more flexible than what it used to be. Uh, and I really, really think that's a really good thing. But can you see that you get, you kind of get to see two and a half before you have to start scrolling. So for me, I would put your most important information at, at the beginning there. So if you've got a mailing list that you want people to sign up to, that's where it needs to go here. Okay, so let's just look at any questions before we move on from it. How many features would you add? I think you can add up to 10. But I, I, again, I just don't add for the sake of it, add because it adds value. That's what you've got to think. Does this add value to my profile? And goes with the other question that the other person was asking about how long you should use having your about section. Just add value. What I say to people is if you write something, ask yourself the so what question. Could anyone else say it? Is it of interest? You know, don't just add for the sake of it, add because it adds value. Ah, right. So Olivia, good to, to link to your Instagram. You could link to your Instagram. I like to keep people on LinkedIn, but obviously with you being a photographer, Instagram's going to work really well. Um, maybe you could put some images together from Instagram and put it on LinkedIn, but it, it depends where you want people to go. That's the most important thing there. Okay. So that's basically how you edit and a few tips with your LinkedIn profile. I'm just going to go and talk about the company page now. Is there any more questions about profiles before we move on to the company page? Um, yes, we do have a book. Uh, yes, the size of Canva, yeah. Uh, right, sorry, so the, the Canva size requirements are, um, you're gonna make me remember them off the top of my head now, is uh, one, uh, five, blah, blah. normally I can say this off the top of my head, but I'm being put on the spot and I can't remember. I'll go back and find it for you. Uh, was that Sally? I'll find it for you in a minute, Sally, when we, uh... and then how do you make your email public once added to appear on the profile page? Um, you've got to make primary, Paul. You've got to select, once you've verified it, you add it, you verify, when you add an email to LinkedIn, your LinkedIn profile, LinkedIn will send an email to that email address you've added. You have to verify it to prove that it is the right email and that it's you that's added it. 
So that's the security thing. Once you've verified it, you will be a button where it says make primary and you'll need to click on the make primary. And Tasman, how do you get providing services? Um, it's about waiting. There is a, a link that, uh, and I'll send that to Rory, um, to, to, to go on the waiting list for it. But um, I've put people on that waiting list and they're still waiting for it. So um, it's a bit of still waiting. Bit annoying, really. Um, should we have uh, oh, uh, mm, to the profile section? Um, probably doesn't add value to your uh, to your audience, but I'd love it if you added it to mine and said you had a great webinar. That'd be fantastic, but probably not relevant for yours. Okay. That question was: Should we have attended your webinar on the profile section? Uh, yeah, so Laura has asked a question. How do you update the media that LinkedIn gets from the links you share on your experience? So the, the problem is, so the, quest, the question is, when you link, whether it's under featured or under experience or whatever, when you uh, link a website to your profile, LinkedIn will just select an image from the website and you cannot change or choose whichever image LinkedIn gets I'm afraid and if it doesn't pick an image up all you get is a gray box so you need to go back to your website people and ask if they can create some kind of featured image so that LinkedIn can pick it up but unfortunately Laura there's uh, it is very random and you can't edit them sorry oh thank you Carmel she's put it in there Fifteen eight four by 396 pixels thank you uh, so that's the uh, header banner size for the personal profile Fantastic. Right. Okay. Let's move on uh, a little bit. So I'm going to do new share. And so we're going to talk a bit about LinkedIn pages because people often say, should I have a company page? Now I'm going to ask, answer this question from the perspective of a small individual business owner, small business. Uh, for people who are employees of a company, most definitely the company needs a company page so that employees can link their personal profiles to the company page, 100%. Uh, but as an individual business owner or a small business, you still need to have a company page. And you now company pages are good because it adds your logo to your personal profile, to the experience section, and also to the header banner at the top. So it looks good. It just is a nice, you know, tick in the box and what have you. Uh, so you can see actually I'm using a photo of me. I am a solo business, uh, so I can use a photo of me as opposed to, I could change that to my logo, but my logo is quite long, um, so you can't really see very well. And I could use this little sort of image here, but it doesn't mean anything. So I just use my picture, so it's up to you. And by having a, a, a company page, the same rules apply in terms of you it's talking to your clients, your folk, it's focused on your target audience, should I say, the challenges that you solve. You can talk about your products and services, a bit more about how you help, like it just gives you a bit more space because the problem with LinkedIn is that you're quite limited. If you've got a website with lots of pages on, you can only put so much text on LinkedIn. So having a company page just gives you that little bit more space to talk more about your business and your products and services. The other reason why you want to have a company page, and this is a, this is a very extreme example, but it's a really good one. So I was having a chat with a lady who's a virtual assistant uh, based in Wakefield. She didn't have a company page and she called her company virtual assistant Wakefield. So you can see she's got this gray box because she doesn't, she hasn't uh, got a company page. <clears throat> and what people will do is if you click on virtual assistant Wakefield, what you get is a list of people. So instead of going to a company page where you've got extra branding on there and says what you do and all nice things like that, it takes you to a list of people. And in this instance, and potentially for you, what will happen, it could be your competitors. So clicking on virtual assistant Wakefield basically brought a list of virtual assistants up in Wakefield. So that's probably the number one reason why you do want a company page is that it actually keeps people within you and your business as opposed to going off anywhere else, which is important. So the other challenge that you've got with creating a company page is that it's a little bit hidden. So you have to go to this work menu. I'll show you, I'm gonna jump back onto LinkedIn in a minute. 
just to go through this, but you have to go to the work menu, which is on the navigation bar, right on the far right hand side of the navigation bar. Click on that and it opens up this window here and you have to go right down to the bottom and click on create company page. They couldn't have made it any more hidden if they tried, honestly, it is well hidden. Uh, or you could just type in this URL here and go there. So linkedin.com slash company slash setup slash new. Um, and then you uh, got this, you get this window and you want to click on small business or medium to large business and think, I wouldn't worry about showcase pages. And then, but if you're a school, you create a school page. So what happens is that you then have a, a company page, you're in admin view, uh, you're going to have a camera image, it's slightly different size to the personal profile, annoyingly. So it's a little, I don't know why it's less width. I would have kept the same width, but apparently it is. Um, and it's one nine, so it's much less steep. It's much uh, narrower on there. Uh, again, this is uh, where you put your icon, your logo, your company name, whatever your company name needs to be. And then you've got a tagline. Now this tagline is the equivalent of your headline in your personal profile. It's 120 characters. It's where you want to say what it is you do. So people could come and go, oh yeah, that's what you do. So it succinctly says what it is that you do for your business. And again, great for keywords. <coughs> the problem is when you're um, doing admin view on LinkedIn, it's really hard to see what it looks like. So you can go and view as, mem as member. So you can go and see what your profile looks like from a member perspective. So I thought I'd jump onto uh, LinkedIn here just to show, oh no, I've done the wrong, sorry, wrong one. here to go on to. So here's one I created earlier. I noticed there's some questions. Are we saving these till the end or should I carry on? Um, it's entirely up to you. I mean, I've got a, a couple of questions if you want to answer them now. Um, when you, viewing Judy's profile on mobile, the link on LinkedIn, the header shows as a standard blue. Oh, does it now? Well, that's naughty. It doesn't know mine. There's been a few glitches with LinkedIn recently, and I had somebody say that they tried to change their header banner. And um, when some when she looked at it on her own profile, um, you see on mine it doesn't. Interesting. I won't show you, but on my when I look at it on my mobile, I've got my header banner. Uh, right. So um, so I've answered. Actually, I've answered that question. I've answered that one. Right, okay, no, that's fine, I'll carry on. So, so this here is the, uh, the company page. And what you've got is all these like little icons here, you know, these pencil icons, and this allows you to go in and edit your page. So it doesn't matter which one you, uh, no, apart from that one, that allows you to upload. But let's click on this one here. So you come to this edit box. So you've got your page info, which is where you would upload your logo, your company name, so you can see you've got 100 characters, but I keep it quite short. So that it's, unless you've got a really long company name, depends what your company name is, but better to keep it fairly short. And this is where you would type in your tagline that you're going to use. <coughs> you've then got buttons, which I quite like. So what do you want? You can choose whether you want visit website, contact us, learn more, register. If you're running an event, you might want to register or sign up, sign up for your mailing list. You know, you can choose a, a, a button there, which I think is quite good. And you can choose whether you want it on or off or not which is quite good. Uh, then you come to this about page here. So we click on, on overview. Now the annoying thing about this, this is where you've got 2000 characters. Can you see up to 2000 characters? Um, what's really annoying with this box is that it's, it's just a fixed box and it's really difficult to type into. I always like to type my, my LinkedIn profile and my company page in a Word document and then copy and paste it over because this is so fiddly. It really is fiddly. Uh, you can add your website, obviously you add information about your organization and then you've got specialities. So you can add up to 20. These are like keywords. So whatever it is that you, uh, that you do. So you can just type them in whatever it is that you want to do and you can just add them in there. Just, just type them in and hit return and it adds those to your profile. Click on save. Um, location, obviously, you can put in. I quite like the fact that, especially as a, 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 a small business, you don't have to have the full, unless you've got an office address, you don't have to have the full uh, visibility of the address on, on there. But what is a lovely little 
feature is this new hashtag. So you can add hashtags to your company page or your LinkedIn page. So you want to have a branded hashtag. So I've got my branded hashtag here as uh, hashtag the LinkedIn lady. Now I want to use these hashtags on my posts. And what it means is it allows you to engage as the company page on LinkedIn. You cannot engage on LinkedIn as a company unless you, it's your own content and you've either tagged your company page or you've got the hashtag in it. So it's quite handy for those of you who work in a company, the marketing executive lady, to think about have you got a branded hashtag for your company? I mean branded, it's got your company name in it. So like I've got a, a colleague of mine, uh, she's a HR person, her hashtag is hashtag mint HR. So, you know, that identifies her. So that's really useful to have in there. And as I said, here is view as member. Normally I like to sort of right click and open this in a new window because if you click on the edit section, you can't actually see very well what you've written. So when you click on overview here, you can't really see what it looks like. So you want to see what it's going to be look like for people visiting your company page. So it's really good to be able to see view as member on here. So you can see it's viewing as member. So I can see uh, if I click on the about section, you can see there, that's what it looks like. You can see the text and, and all your specialities and stuff and things like that. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's just see if there's any questions with regards to uh, company pages. Uh, the, where did it, uh, so, okay, so the diamond separators, Stephen, uh, basically are from that web page. I'll show you where they are. Yeah, no. Uh, right, okay, so groups, uh, LinkedIn groups at the moment aren't particularly brilliant. If you've got a group and you're a manager of that group, you can certainly feature it on your company page uh, if it's relevant. Uh, okay. Right. Okay. So the, um, what was the question I was going to ask? Uh, yes. Diamonds are just, they're just like a symbol. So you can copy and paste it from anywhere. Uh, you can copy and paste it from mine. So, um, any, any more questions in here? Uh, no. Uh, uh, absolutely. Whoever said this question about managing two pages, I certainly would not recommend my view is if the problem with LinkedIn is if you've got two roles or two jobs or two businesses, it is harder to, um, to promote both of them on LinkedIn. LinkedIn works where you've got a niche and an audience and a market. And yes, you can have two profiles by having two separate email addresses, but A, it's against LinkedIn terms and conditions and B, it's double the work. So why, why would you do that? I, I, don't, I don't think it's a good idea to do. So you've got to think about why you're on LinkedIn, who's your audience, where's your biggest bang for your buck, who do you want to get in front of and decide which is going to be the most important to be on LinkedIn. Um, you've lost features from personal profile. How do I get it back? Um, I have absolutely no idea. You mean the featured features? I don't know. I've never lost it. Um, is it ones that you've removed or is the actual feature itself? Um, okay, right. So I am going, I think that's pretty much <laughs> um, everything on there. Let me just go back to yay, back to here. So I've talked about that. This was in case I it didn't work very well, me showing the uh, the, the page, but that's some information about how to uh, edit your LinkedIn company page there. So in summary, so it's pretty much everything I wanted to cover today. I hope that's been useful. Um, remember when you're using LinkedIn to think of LinkedIn as another website um, and it's not necessarily about you. It's about your ideal clients and who you help and how you help. That's really important. So as I say, think about your ideal client and who they are and you use LinkedIn to position why you, your credibility, your expertise, why should somebody work with you? And the other thing I say to people as well is get feedback. The thing about LinkedIn, as I've said already earlier in the call, is that you can edit it as much as you like uh, and change it in an instant. So play with it. It doesn't have to be perfect straight away. Update it, make some changes, and then go and ask people that you work with. Go and ask 
any warm client, ask them to look at it. If they were to come to your profile, does it resonate with them? Do they understand what you're saying? Are they got the right keywords? Do they like your photo? It's really good to get feedback uh, from people that you know um, in, on your profile. So that's everything I was going to cover. I hope that was useful. Um, I think we, I know we've been answering questions as we've gone along, but is there any more questions from people at all? Do we open it up here, Audrey, yes, or do we keep it? Um, yeah, we can, we can still keep it because, yeah. you know, people may still come up with a few questions. Um, we can actually keep it till half, uh, half 12, but if you've got, uh, you know, um, other webinars to attend, you know, um, we can close it at 12. Um, it's really all up to you, to be honest. Right. Okay. No problem. So uh, Petra's asked a question. Would you post on your personal page or your company page? And that's uh, quite a common question as well. Um, basically, uh, your company page, when you post to your, your company page is your uh, content hub. If you create content for your company, you're going to put it on LinkedIn on the company page. However, the only people who are going to see the content on your company page or the pen only have the potential to see it are the people who are following your company page. And generally people have more connections than they have followers on the company page. So I always would post my personal profile <coughs> and also the company page, and but they would be separate, two, two separate posts. They'd be the same content, but the company page probably would be a little bit more sort of corporate company-ish, if you like, but your personal page post, same content, but you'd make it more conversational and chatty. And uh, you've got a question saying, how do I re reassign a company page to another colleague? Is there such a feature? Yes, there is indeed. And there is indeed. You need to be connected with them. And uh, I'll show you how to do that. That's probably easier to show you because um, we don't need that chat box on there. Um, if anybody has got any questions, that'd be great if you would connect with me as well. That'd be fantastic. Love to get your connections and your feedback. Um, so on your company page, let's go to the right one. Let's get rid of that. So can you see where it says admin tools? You've got to go manage admins. And you can go in as, uh, as long as you're connected to them. So I could go and select Rory, for example, or Adrius. Um, so you can just go and uh, if I select Rory and click on save, he'll get a thing to say, oh, you've been made admin. So it's really easy and then I can remove him as well. To be honest with you, you're better off having more than one company admin. So if you work for a company, so the lady who's a marketing executive, have you need to have several people who can manage because people leave, come and go and stuff like that. And so if you ever lose your LinkedIn, you've lost access to your company page as well. <clears throat> Let's have a look. See any more questions? Oh, lovely. Thank you. Thank you, Richmond, for making it. Yes. Um, so um, another question. Well, that I, I suppose that the answer will be yes. Um, is it a good idea to reach out to prospects via LinkedIn direct messages? Um, so the first thing that I would do with people is look to connect with them, first of all. Um, and then you can go and have a, a direct message campaign. But again, you've got to think about what you're saying. You don't want to come across as salesy. You know, you've got to focus on them and what's in it for them. Is it going to be of interest to them? Um, and things like that. So, so yes, you can, but it depends what you're sending them. Don't, you don't want to come across as salesy because you're going to turn people off. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. Yeah. I've seen Sarah's question is here. It's about, I'm sorry, I'm a bit confused. So a profile page in a company. Yes. So yes, in essence, you do have pages, but what I'm saying, Sarah, once you've created your company page, I generally just leave it. I might put a, a post on there. As a, I don't know if you're an individual business owner like I am, but if you're an individual business owner like me, I have a company page. I've put some messaging on there. I've got my branding on there. And every now and again, I might put a post on there. But everything goes through my personal profile. So I don't really need to manage the company page per se. I don't look to recruit followers. If you're a company and you, if you're a company with employees, then you will want to uh, get people following the company page. But for me personally, I just uh, have my uh, personal profile and I just have the company page there sitting in the background. Uh, Tasman is monthly subscription to have LinkedIn. Is it worth it? No. 
uh, in the short answer. What you want to do is make sure that you understand exactly how to use LinkedIn for the free version, first and foremost, and max that out um, before you even think about using it for the paid version. The, the paid, there's two levels of paid version. There's a premium business version and there's the sales navigator version. The sales navigator version is LinkedIn's prospecting platform. It's much, um, it's, it's much more expensive and you've got a lot of features on there. The premium plus uh, to me isn't really worth the money because all you're getting is <clears throat> 90 days views of people who've looked at your profile and you can uh, do unlimited searching. But there's ways and means around that. Not so much in the 90 days views, but it, I think it's for £45 a month, I think it's a lot of money to spend for what you get. So, and I, I don't think it's worth it. Uh, excellent revamping good 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 i'd love to uh see what you what you do with your profiles when you ramp them do i see any future for groups um they're slowly so linkedin linkedin groups used to be good and you used to get a lot of people in there then they made all these changes and made them private and everybody forgot about them and and they kind of became very very quiet and inactive there are some groups that are good like yorkshire mafia is a very good group it's got lots of people in there um at this moment in time, they are reintroducing all the features in groups that they took away. So potentially we could get back to where groups are good again, but I wouldn't hold your breath at the moment. Uh, for me, I think there's more to do with uh, on LinkedIn than just looking at groups. So I think I've answered that question about a premium account. Uh, um, so... Thank you, revamping to do the re list. So just seeing if there's any more questions on the chat box here. So Olivia, can I get away with just ticking along with my existing opponent, which is very much fair because it's just me in the business, social. Yeah, absolutely, Olivia, totally, totally. If you just don't want to use, if you just want LinkedIn to be a presence, or you've got a good profile, leave it and, fo and focus on what's more important. LinkedIn is a tool. You do not have to use LinkedIn. It's not the be all and end all. You have to understand your audience, where they hanging out. If you don't, you know, I absolutely wholeheartedly agree. For me, I'm very much on the view that um, you should focus on, on one platform and make sure it works well and focus on the platform that's most important to you. <clears throat> I'm on LinkedIn. I'm very rarely on Facebook. Um, so I, I like to do everything through LinkedIn, obviously. But yeah, just focus on why it's most important to you. How can you use hashtags? So hashtags are very much like uh, on any, like on Twitter and Facebook, they group conversations together. And you put your hashtags on posts, so LinkedIn posts. So you'll do a post, like I did a post this morning about the fact that I'm going to be on this webinar and I put hashtag LinkedIn lady. And um, so people can follow hashtags. So you want to have a hashtag as well, include a hashtag in that where it's got lots of followers because you've got more potential then for it to be visible because uh, LinkedIn will go, oh, all of these people are interested in this hashtag subject. Um, so you've got more potential for your posts to be seen from hashtags that have got lots of followers. So you need to be careful with your hashtags. You'll see some posts that have just got hashtag, 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 hashtag. That isn't going to work very effectively. You need to have some kind of strategy with hashtags. So you're looking for hashtags that have got, A, you're going to have your branded hashtag and you probably want to try and get people to follow that as well. Um, but that's slightly harder. But uh, but if you've got employees, everybody wants to follow your branded uh, hashtag. But then, so like LinkedIn, hashtag LinkedIn training will have lots of followers. So that for me is a good hashtag to use. So um, that's how you're using hashtags. But if you actually put those three hashtags on your company page, it means that there's any posts that talk about LinkedIn training, I can go and engage as my company. Now, for me personally, that's not really valuable. But if you're a company with employees and you've got a post that's talking about your area of expertise, you can go in and engage as the company. It helps raise the visibility of the company. So, um, so brilliant. I, uh, I missed the last slide. I, don't think there was much interest in there apart from get feedback, Karen. So hopefully, I don't think I'm getting, am I getting any more questions coming? Oh, advertising works, LinkedIn advertising. Um, so Kavita, um, I think LinkedIn advertising is very expensive. For me, I focus on organic first, um, rather than going down the LinkedIn advertising route. And I think like anything, 
when you're advertising, whether it's LinkedIn, Facebook, Google, whatever, you've got to make sure the marketing behind it is right. So when you put up an ad, where are you driving to? What's the funnel? Where are they going to sign up? It's all that kind of has to be done like any other kind of campaign. Um, but the thing with LinkedIn ads is that they're quite expensive. And even the expert on LinkedIn ads recommends testing on Facebook. So you've got to have a high, they recommend having a high customer value product or a lifetime value of a client to make it worthwhile. Uh, what size does the emission have to be to be featured on a featured post? Um, good question. And off the top of my head, I don't know. There is a, there is a thing, where did it say? It was, it's a really odd, it's like, 1200 by six something or other for as an image for a post um but i'm not sure if there's anything different for featured so i will uh, double check that and let you know so image size for featured so do we have any more questions how are we doing i think oh five new messages Oh, Stephen, you just make it up. How to produce. Right, okay, sorry. Right, I'll just show you. How do you do your branded, branded, branded hashtag? Right, so if I just come down to my hashtags here. So just click on the pencil. So let me just uh, let me just delete one of these. So Because it can only have three. So I'm going to click on add hashtag. And you're just going to type in whatever it is, your name of your company. And and that's it and that's how you've added it so you can just whatever it is you want it to be hashtags you don't really own hashtags but if that's why you call it a branded hashtag because anybody can use a hashtag but if you have your name in it it's people won't necessarily your competitors won't want to use your hashtag it's just making you stand out a little bit more i think that hopefully answers that question sorry how to get the hashtag bit uh, i've just answered that question Yes, yes, LinkedIn Learning is, is a premium feature, yeah. So if it's useful to you to have LinkedIn Learning, um, yes, you may want to pay for LinkedIn for it. Oh, how to get to the hashtag. That's in the company page. So uh, let me just discard that. So I'm just on my, I'm just on the admin section of my company page. So you can either come down here to community hashtags or you can uh, go in and click on a pencil icon and it brings up this edit box and it's there. So there's kind of two places. Any tips on researching hashtags? Um, I do, what I do on LinkedIn is I, I actually go in and I search them. So there is a good example actually is, um, so if you, you can just type in the keyword search field at the top, any, any kind of words. So if you do UK manufacturing, for example, and hit return, what that's going to do is go away. And can you see, it tells you how many followers there are for UK manufacturing. Okay, so let's just see if I take this and do manufacturing UK. See, there's 416. So for me, if you, go, if you target manufacturing, you're far better going hashtag UK manufacturing than manufacturing UK. Okay. So for me, it's about, the, if there is some research just on LinkedIn. I go and have a look at what, hashtags your clients are using um, and and just see where you get the most volume so for example the another one as well is like the work from home hashtag work from home if you look at that some people use hashtag wfh work from home right so it's thirty eight thousand followers um or, or some people do work or work work from home Oh, lovely LinkedIn. Going to have a, oh, there we go. There's 153. So you can see, see the difference when that comes off. It's been really slow. Stop it. So 153,000 compared to 39,000. So incredible. Uh, right, okay, so any etiquette on adding people on LinkedIn, I wait until you've met them in person. Again, it comes back down to your objective. Some people say, I only connect with people I've met, which is all well and good, but if you're using LinkedIn for business development, you need to grow your network. 
And um, again, if you'd look at face-to-face -face networking, you wouldn't go face-to-face -face network and there's somebody you don't know and go, I'm not talking to you until I'm introduced. It doesn't work like that, does it? So you're looking for opportunities, rapport opportunities to go in and, and uh, make connections. What is a good follower rate for an international business? Um, in terms of the company page, I'm assuming that is. Um, I guess the more the merrier for most people. The more, if you've got a lot of company page followers, you've got more people to see your content. So that really, uh, and it, it's the same, it's same with personal connections. You know, the more connections you've got, the more opportunity there is for people to see your content. But that doesn't mean you should just go connect, 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 and connect with everyone. You should be careful about who you connect with because your network is your net worth, remember. You've got to it's balance between quality and quantity. So I think that answers that question. Is there any more questions coming through? Yeah, not to the moment, not from the Q&A box, no. Uh, I think I've, uh, I know there's probably been quite a few I might have missed earlier on. Um, because I don't think when, when you're recording the call, people can't see the chat box, can they? So makes it a little bit tricky. Um, I'm not really too sure about that. So um, I can't see any more questions coming through. So um, yeah, I mean, we, we can wrap up if, if, uh, if there are no more questions. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so to, to all of you guys uh, who joined us today, um, if you did enjoy today's session, please um, make sure to attend tomorrow's webinar because we've got a webinar tomorrow at the same time, 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, and it will be on e-commerce, uh, your guide to selling more online delivered by Heather Robinson. Um, all of, the, all of this recording will be sent to you in the follow-up email and we will also send you a survey um, and we would be very grateful if you all could complete it because every feedback uh, helps us loads. Um, thank you again, Judy, for joining us today. Um, I'm sure that we'll have uh, more webinars in the future. Um, and uh, thank you everyone who joined us today as well. And uh, thank you and uh, have a good day, everyone. Stay safe, stay home, and uh, I'll, I'm, I'll make sure that um, we meet again in the future. <laughs> Fantastic, thank you. Okay then, bye now for now.